Hey bag maker, today I'm going to be talking about new Tulip Pink solid colored webbings that we've added to the shop and also we have 11 new bag packs so that's pretty exciting. Tonight's bag lab will be how to add padded back, back, backpack straps to a bag and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. Thanks so much for joining me for the show. Um, let me skip ahead to my usual spam reminder. So if you're watching over on Facebook and if you ever receive a private message from a logo that looks like our So Sweetness logo, uh, we never send private messages through Facebook, so go ahead and report or block that. And if you're watching over on YouTube and you've left a comment, on the show and you see a reply to your comment, again, it usually looks the same as our So Sweetness logo, sometimes asking for you to wire or transfer money in order to claim a prize, um, maybe asking for a phone number, address, go ahead and report or block that as well. Um, I always announce the winner, the giveaway winner's name verbally on the show and we've added the giveaway winner's name to the description of the show also. I see Janet's watching. Thanks for tuning in, Janet. Lynette's watching from Alaska and Kathleen from Michigan. So welcome everyone. And um, my second reminder, uh, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the books, fabrics, notions, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. Uh, I'm going to be answering some questions live near the end of the show. So if you have a question for me, you can type it into the comments at any time, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. It can be a general sewing question, question about a notion or tool, bag making question, maybe you have a question about my sewing history, feel free to type that into the comments at any time throughout the show and Danny will be collecting your questions so that I can answer them later on. All right, some um, new Tulip Pink solid colored webbings have hit the shop. These are in one inch wide uh, webbing. These are from Renaissance Ribbons. And I'm gonna have Danny switch to the overhead camera. <laughs> so five new colors, this is the teal. I'm gonna go ahead and lay them all out. <clears throat> I really was excited for the solid colored webbings because while I did love the stripes, I feel like the solids have the potential to go to match with um, some more fabric choices. So these are all sort of bright neon colors to go along with Tula's Everglow fabric line, but of course they can match with other fabrics as well. And these are, when the webbings first came out, I feel like they're very close to seatbelt strapping. I really like the finish. They're not traditionally what I've purchased from big box stores, which I appreciate. It's a little bit nicer. So the colors are teal, pink, orange, neon yellow, and purple. So I love these. Let me know in the comments which color is your favorite. I think I probably would use the pink one most often just because I tend to often use a lot of pinks in in my fabric choices for making bags, but I think the yellow is something really special, especially if you have a match for it. I think it's something unexpected and I, I really love the bright colors, but we do have these in the shop right now. I made sure to order plenty of each of the colors and we sell them by the yard and we sell them by the continuous yard, meaning if you order a quantity of three, you'll get, um, whatever 36 inches times three is, it'll be a single continuous piece. So if you need to use it for maybe adjustable straps, maybe you need a longer piece, um, you'll get a continuous piece. And we do still have almost all of the previous Tula Pink webbings in stock uh, with the stripes. Um, we have one inch wide and one and a half inch wide, but these new ones are all one inches wide. And I've got a link in the description for um, the new Tula Pink webbings in case you're interested in checking them out after the show. I have been watching a new TV show with Violet. It's on Apple Plus, um, but we just love it. Not all the episodes are out yet, but it's called 
Lessons in Chemistry, and it's based on a book. So I kind of did things the opposite of what I would normally do. As soon as we started watching the TV show, I started reading the book as well. Um, and I kind of, normally I, normally I like the books a lot more than the TV show, but I feel like the TV show and the book really complement each other well because I think the actors in the show did a really great job at, I, I feel like I have more insight into their personalities and also reading the book, I don't get that same insight, but I feel like I get a little bit more background, if you will. Um, but Danny's going to put a couple pictures up on the screen. This is from the TV show. Um, so the main character starts off working in uh, a lab as a chemist. And then, I don't think this is a spoiler alert because this was in the trailer. Um, by the end, you see her hosting a cooking TV show. And this is in the, I think it was in the 60s or 70s. So very interesting. I, I like seeing all of their different outfits. Um, I enjoyed, because she's a scientist, she also approaches cooking from a scientist's point of view. So I think that's really interesting. And, you know, I like to cook and bake and I like to see her perspective. She makes the same meal. She takes notes. She makes little changes and it's all science-based. So I, I thought it was really cool. I've linked to um, the TV show as well as the book in the description. I know not everyone has Apple TV, um, but if if you just want to read the book or maybe take it out from your local library, the book's fantastic as well. I really love it. And it, it's got, I think I saw it had like over 200,000 reviews on Amazon. So clearly a well-loved book and I'm not sure why I didn't hear about it sooner, but I'm really enjoying both the TV show um, and the book. So speaking of cooking, I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. I know I generally ask a lot of, um, I throw in a lot of cooking related questions, but I'm always curious to add new recipes uh, to my repertoire. So it's kind of selfish based, but let me know in the comments, what's your favorite dish to either cook or bake? Because I, I know they're there's a difference in cooking and baking. Um, but let me know in the comments um, and I'll try to look up some of those recipes after the show because I'm always interested in trying out new things. So lots of new backpacks to add to the shop. So if you're not familiar with our backpacks, these are two yard packages of fabric, two different fabrics, each one yard cuts. And I've sort of curated fabrics as what I thought would make great matches for an exterior of a bag and a lining of a bag. So obviously not all my patterns are one inch exterior and one inch lining, but I think most of them would be at least that or maybe a little bit less as far as the amounts of fabric go. Um, so um, I've got a link in the description for our bag pack section of the shop and Danny's gonna switch over to the overhead camera so that I can show you what fabrics are in each pack. All right, uh, Danny, if you wouldn't mind zooming in, that would be great, thank you. All right, so this is the first pack and you might recognize these fabrics. Danny's gonna put a picture up on the screen. This is the Blazing Star bag. Shara made this one and um, I thought, this is one of my favorite combinations for fabric. So I thought, why not have that in the shop? So this one's available now as a bag pack. So each of the fabrics that I show you, I'll put both of them up on the screen and that's what's included in the bag pack. This next one, I have to say, the most emails I've ever gotten about what fabric was used in a particular bag. This was from the Chickadee backpack. Danny's gonna put the picture up on the screen of that one. So there's the Chickadee backpack. Amy Hutton made this from Bed Hog Shop. And this fabric combination is just awesome. I, I can't say enough good things about it. And again, this is uh, another backpack available in the shop. Honestly, this fabric came out, I think, a few years ago, at least a couple years ago, a year or two ago, maybe. So I am I was really excited to see that they still had it available to purchase. This one we just got in, so my parents just cut this one, and the peacocks really caught my eye. I like that it's sort of a... It doesn't have metallics in it, but it sort of gives off the idea that it does. Um, love the peacocks. Love the bright purple flowers for a lining. And uh, again, this is a link to a backpack in the description. 
This next one, I guess to go along with the geometric theme, I just like this. I'm sure it's maybe a slightly Christmassy fabric, but um, maybe used in a small pouch. I don't think it necessarily reads Christmas. And this next one is the same design as that other geometric one that the Chickadee was made in, but a different color palette. So this one's got um, sort of a seafoam green, peach, yellow, just sort of a different, let me open this up a little bit bigger. So just a different read on the same different design of that previous pack. And here's another one with the triangles, just a different colorway. So I'm always on the lookout for new fabrics. I just, right before the show, I a new one popped up that I ordered. So I'm hoping to add lots more bag packs in the future. This one's a fun one because it's crochet inspired. Obviously it's not really crochet. This is a quilting cotton, but I thought it would be really fun for um, like a crochet bag to take your yarns on the go. And then this next one is sort of cruel inspired. My mom was explaining to me about cruel the other day that it's sort of like embroidery, but the the threads are a little bit different. I really, I have no experience with cruel. I just love the design. I love the bright colors. Um, and I suppose either of these could go for the exterior and the lining, uh, whichever one you liked better. I have my Monarch Butterfly t-shirt on today, so I thought it would be appropriate since I'm talking about these fabrics. So um, this second fabric has sort of a, a poem about Monarch Butterflies, which I thought was really special. And I just love the print. I love that it's black and white. Um, next one, this bird print caught my eye. This one's clearly, this one clearly le reads as a lining fabric, but I loved this print as well. This next one I ordered extra of because I figured all the quilters out there would really love it. So it's sort of like a cheater print of pieced star quilt blocks and more of a texturized print for the lining. But I mean, this is fantastic. If you're needing a sort of like a supply bag to take your things, if you're going to a sewing retreat, this is the first fabric that I would reach for for making a bag like that. Maybe a nuthatch organizer or an amethyst project bag. This is the perfect fabric for that in my humble opinion. So I've got links to all of the bag packs in the description or rather it's just one single bag pack section in the shop but um, every month or every other month we'll be adding more bag packs to the shop so um, stay tuned and I'll, I'll just be ordering the fabrics a single time so whenever we sell out of each pack um, I won't be restocking it so if you have your eye on something go ahead and pick it up uh, before it uh, goes away I guess all right I know I've been talking about I'm done planting for the year but there's another one more at my favorite native nursery it's about an hour and a half away but they have one more plant sale coming up this weekend so I'm gonna go Friday morning um, and I have a whole list of trees and shrubs that I'm going to be purchasing because technically I can still plant a native Illinois tree or shrub as long as the ground's not frozen. So I'm thinking I still have a good amount of time. So I'm this morning I spent a lot of time making my list of how many things I'm going to get and where they're going because I like to know, especially with a tree or a shrub, where it's going rather than just buying things and then having to figure it out later because it really stresses me out. So I'm going to get some, here's just a sampling of some of the things on my list. So there's a few bulbs that are going to be available. Um, Smooth Solomon Seal, I'm going to get that one. I've wanted to get Button Bush for a while, so I'm going to get three of those. Uh, persimmons, I just decided yesterday I'm going to get some of those. Um, there's sort of a small tree called a wahoo I love that name and then pawpaws I'm going to get some of those also so I've got spots for all of those the outside of my yard is more of a natural looking area so that's why some of these particular plants work for that but I'm super like I can't explain how excited I am to to get these and plant them this weekend so I'll give you an update how the planting went after everything gets in the ground all right, so the book review for this week is a book with both instructions in French and English, and these are all quilts in this particular book. I'm gonna have Danny switch to the overhead camera. 
So all of the quilts in the book are inspired by exhibition quilts from the late 1800s and early 1900s and quilts also inspired by the by the author's family. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually with most quilt books there's sort of instructions in the beginning for basic uh, sewing together of the blocks. This particular book does not have that but it does have um, illustrations, pattern pieces are in the front and in the back and there's also pattern pieces on the pages I guess if you wanted to copy if you lost the original pages but I'm just going to go ahead and flip through all the quilts. Um, they're sort of on the traditional side because like I mentioned they're inspired by exhibition quilts um, and here you can see that there's um, text in both French and in English which I really appreciated but I look at a lot of these quilts and even though some of I, I'm just being honest like I really love bright bright solid colored fabrics but I can definitely see a lot of these quilts changed up with sort of a different color scheme this is my favorite quilt in the book I can't wait to make this one I love the center stars love all the flying geese around the perimeter and yeah this is going to be a really fun quilt to make I think So this is a huge book. There's tons of quilts in it. I can see just by looking at the designs that all these quilts took a lot of time to make, which I appreciated. And there's information about each of the designs, what the exhibition quilts that they were inspired by. And so I just thought this was a really interesting book to pick up. Lots of hexagons over here in this particular, particular quilt, some applique in this one. And I try to review sort of an array of different craft related books, but definitely the quilt books are, I feel like the biggest volume of craft books that are coming out are definitely quilt books. All right, and there's the last one over here. So if this book kind of caught your eye, there's a link in the description to the book and um, there's also a lot of um, really fun books on the Quilt Mania website, which you'll be able to find if you um, click on this link. So uh, feel free to check that out after the show if you're interested in that book. And all right, Danny, are you ready? We are interrupting the show for a special report. Because now it is time for Bag Lab. All right, so today's Bag Lab, this particular bag was made by Michelle Tripp from Bear Boo Boo Designs, and Michelle wanted to turn the satellite bag, which is a crossbody bag, into a backpack. So um, Danny's going to put a, a few pictures up on the screen of the backpack actually being worn and just some other pictures of the backpack. Um, this fabric is Tula Pink moon garden fabric. I had to think about that one for a second. And I just thought it was a great idea when Michelle first mentioned that she wanted to turn the satellite bag into a backpack. On, I'll be honest, I didn't really see the vision. But once I saw the finished photos of what the backpack looked like, I was like, oh, now I get it. Like, it's a really great size. It's really unique and interesting as a backpack, especially with that zippered flap. And honestly, it's really easy to turn a bag like this into a backpack. Um, I think there's some pictures coming up. Oh, no pictures of it being worn. I, I guess. Give you the wrong type. Of okay, I think I forgot to send those to Danny. So we'll try to post the other pictures of the backpack being worn on social media. However, um, I I generally try to make the instructions for modifying a bag generalized. So while we are talking about the satellite bag here. Um, you can use a lot of different so sweetness patterns to turn them into a backpack and so I've got a downloadable link in the description for the pattern piece for the straps as well as um, this little strap extender piece over here it's sort of like a little triangle so you can go ahead and download and print that out um, so that you have those pieces and here are the instructions for putting everything together and then I have a few comments after the video for um, keeping the straps out of the seam allowance as well in case you need to do that um, like is done for this particular backpack. So here's the demonstration. Now we're going
going to make the strap. So pull out your two strap extender pieces and I'm going to flip them so that they're wrong side face up. And I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to draw a line along the longest edge that's a quarter of an inch in. I'm going to press toward the wrong side at the, that line. And then I'm also going to fold in half wrong sides together and press one more time. Now take your nylon strapping and cut two pieces that are each 16 inches long and for the nylon strapping and again you want to make sure this is uh, you're only doing this on nylon strapping cotton strapping you don't want to heat seal but I have my lighter here and I'm just oh, let me cut that off I'm just going to take my lighter and run it over each end that I cut and what that does is because this is nylon, it just melts the end and seals it so that it doesn't fray. Again, be careful if you do decide to heat seal. Okay, so we're gonna take the nylon strapping and I'm going to insert it past the folded edge of the strap extender by a half an inch. So if you'd like to take your ruler and you can go ahead and draw that half inch line and we're just going to be inserting it until it hits the line and it should be along the crease over here. Okay, so that's what it should look like. I'm going to use a wonder clip to hold that in place. And I'm going to do the same thing for the second piece as well. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew the entire outer edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance and also a quarter of an inch seam allowance and feel free to stitch some extra reinforcement as um, this area in particular needs to be strengthened because this is the piece that will be attached to the straps of the backpack. And I went ahead and changed my stitch length back to my regular stitch length and on my machine that's two and a half millimeters. And as I finish sewing that third edge, I'm going to transition into quarter inch. And I also wanted to share with you, even though this just has the two lines of stitching, if you'd like some extra reinforcement on this particular piece, I have the five lines of stitching. I'm particularly concentrating on where the nylon strapping is going in there so it's extra reinforced and so at least two lines of stitching but if you'd like to do more that's perfectly fine as well. Now pull out your exterior main panel. This is the piece that's attached to the foam interfacing and first off you want to make sure that the top edge is at the top and if you're not sure you can go ahead and reference your paper pattern piece and also I've got my top edge marked on the wrong side of the fabric. And we're going to be drawing a line that's one inch up from the bottom edge and it doesn't have to be all the way across, just along the side edges is fine. I'm going to be using my Clover Chaco to mark that one inch marking. And then pull out your prepared strapping pieces and we want the raw edge of the strap extender to be 
even with the raw edge of the exterior main panel and we want the strapping to be pointed up. So as you can see, I've got my little dog ear at the top. So I'm going to align this, the bottom edge with that one inch marking. And I'm going to use Wonder Clips to hold this in place. And then same thing on the opposite side. Again, lining up that one inch marking, aligning the raw edge and pinning this in place. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're just going to sew the side edges using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and trim that overhang, those little dog ears away. And now go ahead and pull out your strap pieces. So you should have four pieces to each mirror image. So what that means is they're not exactly the same. They're sort of, well, mirror image as, as, it's, as it's called. And we're going to be pairing these up so that they're right sides together. So you should have the two pairs. Okay, so we're going to be pinning these strap pieces in place. However, we're going to leave an opening along the top edge. So we're going to leave an opening up here and we're going to leave approximately a six inch opening along one of the side edges that will help turn the fabrics right side out. So I'm going to use some wonder clips to hold this in place. And besides those two edges for the openings, we're going to be sewing this using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And as I'm sewing through the curve, I'm sewing slowly and just keep, if you can, the fabric moving. Now I'm going to tape take the strap and I'm going to cut small V's wherever there's a curved edge and I'm going to cut them approximately half an inch apart. And what that does is it helps when we turn the fabrics right side out, it helps to eliminate some of that extra bulkiness because we're eliminating some of the fabric where we're cutting the V's. So again, just where there's the curved edge. And then we're going to turn this right side out and that's why we left the extra opening so we'd have an easier time when it comes to this end in turning it. Okay, so I'm going to use my precision turning tool to poke out this end. And then I'm going to take my iron and give this a press. So as I'm working, I'm going to take my fingers and sort of roll the seam. And then the edge with the opening, the opening that's along the side of the strap, I'm just going to press that toward the wrong side by a quarter of an inch. Okay, so let me start at the top edge.
Okay, so I'm going to use some Wonder Clips just to hold that edge for just a second. And then we're going to be sliding the strap insert piece that we cut from the foam interfacing in between the two layers. And if you'll notice, the foam is not as long as the actual strap fabric piece. That's intentional so that we can keep that foam out of the seam allowance when we attach the strap to the body of the bag. Okay, so I'm going to remove the wonder clips and I'm going to insert this foam piece, make sure it's oriented in the same direction that your fabric piece is. And I'm just going to go ahead and slide it so that it hits that crease at the top. Okay, so once I feel the foam at this top edge, I'm going to use some Wonder Clips so that it does, the foam does not slide back down. And then I'm going to insert the foam in the top half. Okay, so I'm going to just smooth everything out and then I'm going to reposition the fabrics so that I can attach the wonder clips again. You want to make sure that that foam is securely inside so that it's not poking out. And we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew the finished edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance and then also a half inch seam allowance. So the two stitching lines and I'm going to increase my stitch length to three millimeters for this top stitching. So I'm going to apply some extra wonder clips just to make sure that I can keep everything flat before it comes under the needle. You repeat the same process with the second strap piece and the second strap insert piece. And now we're going to be attaching the strap adjuster. So you'll need to cut two pieces, each four inches long from the nylon strapping. And I, because this is nylon, I used my lighter to heat seal both of the ends on both pieces. And then you'll also need two of the plastic strap adjusters. These are one inch strap adjusters. The ones that I'm using are made by Dritz and there should be the two in the package. And you'll notice that one side has teeth showing on one of the bars that are in the middle. And then, then on the other side, the teeth are along the lower edge. I'm going to place this so that the teeth that are on one of the center bars are face up. Okay, so on one of the pieces of nylon strapping, I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure two inches, sorry, 
a half inch down from the top edge and I'm going to just draw a line with my clover taco. Again, that's half inch down. I'm just going to go ahead and fold that back toward the wrong side and I'm going to add a wonder clip to hold that in place. And then I'm going to bring this lower edge so that the raw edge meets the piece that I already folded. So that's what it should look like. I'm going to put a wonder clip on there for just one second. And then we're going to be sort of threading this nylon strapping on this piece onto the bar that's on the top, so not the bar with the teeth. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to open that up temporarily. I can still see the crease. I'm going to slide it underneath the very top. And then I'm going to pull it through. And then it's going to go over just the top bar like that. So again, that's what it should look like. Again, I'm going to meet that raw edge again so that it hits the top edge. Okay, so now I'm going to take my strap piece and I'm going to draw a line that's two inches up from the bottom edge. And I'm going to place this piece of nylon so that the top edge of the nylon is at the line that I drew and it should be centered. So I'm going to take my ruler and just make sure that it's centered from either side. Okay, so I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. I'm going to sew an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the nylon strapping and I'm going to come as close as I can to this top edge of the plastic so that'll be about a half inch away. So I'm going to sew a rectangular box and if you wish you can also sew an X through the box for extra reinforcement and I recommend that your top thread matches the color of your nylon strapping and that your bobbin thread matches your fabric. And then if you're sewing the X through the box, you can just go ahead and keep sewing. You repeat that process to sew the second piece of the nylon strapping to the remaining strap adjuster. And I just wanted to call your attention to the strap pattern piece. So there's a marking on the piece that says this edge faces the center of the backpack. So you want to have uh, the mirror image of the completed strap pieces with the strap adjusters face up. So as you can see, this curve matches the pattern piece. And if I flip it over, then I have the mirror image piece. So you want to have that curve in the correct orientation. So pull out your exterior main panel again with those um, little triangles on the bottom edges. And I'm also going to pull out the paper pattern piece for the main panel. So I'm going to just for now push these out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and align the paper pattern piece with the fabric and I'm going to mark the center edge. So with that center marking, I'm going to mark a quarter of an inch to either side of the center marking. So I'm going to use a red pen just so I can easily distinguish between the center marking and those two quarter of an inch markings. Okay, so again, keeping those strap pieces in the same positioning, again, matching it up if you need to with the strap pattern piece. I'm going to place the raw edges of the strap aligned with the top raw edge of the exterior main panel. This edge will be placed along the quarter of an inch marking and then I'm going to go ahead and pin that in place. Same thing with this piece. Place it at that quarter of an inch marking. So here's that, that white chalk is my center marking. 
And then I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew both of these in place using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so Danny found the pictures of the satellite bag being worn, so Danny's gonna put those up on the screen right now. There we go, thanks Danny. So there's just kind of a different view of it being worn on someone's back, um, also for scale. I think it looks super unique, with, especially with the zippered flap and I also wanted to mention too, in that demonstration, the backpack straps were sewn to the top seam of the bag. Danny, I'm gonna have you switch to the overhead camera really quick. So for this, for the satellite bag, just because of the flap is also sewn into the top seam, Michelle was concerned that one, it would be really thick in that top seam with the flap and the straps, and two, the straps when being worn, if they were in that top seam, it might start to pull at the flap. And so what Michelle did here was she created a facing, which you can see with this teal fabric. So I made a little sample over here. So this facing was cut out of fabric two inches wide, and then I went ahead and put a one inch wide strip of ShapeFlex interfacing down the center, and I pressed along both of the long edges by a half an inch, and that enclose, closes the raw edges. And you'll just wanna cut this strip as long as the piece that you're attaching it to. So if it's the satellite bag, it's this particular piece. Um, if you're using a different bag, you'll just wanna make sure it's as long as the piece that you're attaching it to. And this particular piece was just set um, down from the top raw edge by one inch. Obviously this has a seam in it, so that kind of takes some of it away, but it was placed one inch down and then the straps were just sewn halfway down so that the raw edges of the straps were enclosed. And then this piece was just top stitch. So you have two options. You can either attach the straps into your top seam or you can create a facing like in the satellite bag um, just to keep things a little bit neater. And then you'll still have the raw edges enclosed. And also this little loop piece made of webbing was also attached um, in the facing, which you can do as well. But everything else, the bottom portions um, were the same as in that demonstration. So you just have the two different options for um, attaching the handles along the top. And I think, yeah, super cute and um, definitely will enjoy using this. And the rest of the bag, besides the flap and that front pocket was made out of a black vinyl. All right, so I'm gonna answer a few questions live. Um, I heard Danny throughout the demonstration collecting your questions, so I'm sure there's plenty to answer. Linda says, have you ever heard of the Butler method for putting in zippers? I saw a video today and sounds like it could be good in some of your patterns. I have heard it mentioned in the past. Um, I honestly, I don't know what it entails. I guess I'll have to revisit it after the show. Let me write that down. Just by the name, it sounds like it the method belongs to someone. So if that's the case, I probably wouldn't demonstrate it just because I'm assuming they would want to demonstrate their own method. But Chris says, what is a good brand of material that does not fray? I think it depends on if you're, if you need it to not fray because you're having raw edges shown, like say maybe like a, a bag tab. Um, I use a lot of quilting cotton. Obviously it, it does fray, but I feel like when you're working with it, unless you're ripping seams, um, like I was the other day when I was ripping my bag apart three or four times while I was making it, uh, it was for a new pattern. I should clarify that. Um, then it does fray, but if you're just working with it without ripping things apart a lot, quilting cotton's pretty easy to work with and also pretty forgiving if you have to rip a seam. Um, Rob says, is there a good way of estimating how big of a space is needed for turning right side out? Mine are always way too big or way too small when it isn't specified in the pattern. Oh, that's a good question. I don't know that there's a formula. I always try to make the turning space as big as possible. 
And you can also, you can always modify the turning. For instance, if you're working on one of my patterns that's turned through the zipper pocket, which a few of them are, and you find that due to the materials that you're using, maybe you're using like a thicker vinyl, um, maybe you're having a hard time turning it right side out due to the materials that you're using, you can always instead make an opening along the bottom. I've seen people also make openings that are centered along the side edge. Again, it depends on the design of the bag. I also have a couple patterns where the opening is left in the side as opposed to in the bottom, but I feel like the bottom is where the openings are left most often. And yeah, I think the thickness of the substrates of the fabrics that you're using definitely come into play if you need a bigger opening. Carol says, do you have a pattern for a smaller satellite bag for smaller children? Oh, that's a good question. I, I don't have a bag just like this in a smaller size. I'm trying to think if I've ever seen one made smaller, like printed at a smaller percentage. I'm not sure that I have, uh, but I do have a free video on my YouTube channel and on my website, how to increase or decrease a pattern. So you might want to check out that video. Um, I would guess it would be okay to make this satellite bag smaller. Actually, I think it would be super cute in a smaller size. If you've made it smaller, um, feel free to let me know in the comments or if you're watching this later on in the Facebook group, um, feel free to let me know. I would be really curious to see it in the smaller size as well. Ella says the Butler method sews the zipper into one end of the bag and no zipper tabs. I've seen it in a lot of commercial bags, not as tidy as zipper tabs in my opinion. Hmm, that's interesting. I'm assuming the zipper is sewn at like a, is that a 45 degree angle or 90 degree angle? 90. 90. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> Linda says, do all your patterns come with a video tutorial? I'm a visual learner. I would say the vast majority of them do. There's some of the earlier patterns that we just never got around to making a video, but I would say it's maybe, if I had to guess, maybe like 10 or less patterns have no video. Um, but... Once we started producing videos, maybe six or seven years ago, any of the patterns going forward, those always had videos. Kim says, do you ever have an issue with your Juki pulling lightweight cotton, quilting cotton down into the feed dogs at the start of sewing a simple seam? Just had my TL 2010Q service. Any tips? I have not had that problem. My only thought is to make a, I'm not sure if I'm remembering the term correctly, like a either a leader or a starter, like a little scrap of fabric that you, let me see if I can, I'm not sure if I can say this, but I think maybe visually I can do a better job. Danny, can you switch to the overhead camera? Okay, so pretend this is your the area you're about to sew over this fabric over here. The leader, which is just gonna be a little scrap, it doesn't have to be a big fabric, but you place it close by not butted up, but close by so that you sew over the leader before you get to your good fabric to minimize it getting stuck because the leader is where you um, start sewing through first. Um, I'm not sure if that's the best option. If you have a, a better tip than that, let us know in the comments. Danny will, if you're watching live, Danny will try to look out for that to post it up on the screen. That's my only idea for that, I'm going to be honest. Um, Michelle, Michelle made the uh, satellite bag with the backpack strap. She says the satellite bag on the model is on my 11 year old. So it's smaller in reality than it might appear. Maybe small enough for a younger child too. Oh, thanks. Thanks Michelle for that follow-up comment. Are you calling in on the questions, Danny? All right. I apologize if I did not get your question live. I know tonight's demonstration was a little bit, a little bit longer than usual but I will be back again next Sunday with Danny and I'll be answering lots more questions live. One last thing to get to is, oh, I did not out announce the winner from last week's giveaway. The winner from last week's giveaway is Valerie6575. So congratulations to you, Valerie. Please send me an email after the show so that I can get you connected to your prize. And then the prize for tonight is a packet of soft and stable interfacing in the black color. The black color is really fantastic if you're using like jewel tones or bright colors because it really helps it stand out. 
and um, the giveaway will be randomly drawn. You have until the end of the day this Saturday to leave a comment on the show wherever you watch on Facebook or YouTube. We add all those comments together, and then I will announce the giveaway winner on next Sunday's show. And I have a bonus question for you that you can um, answer in the comments for an extra method of entry. Which style of bag do you personally like to carry? Do you like a crossbody bag? Do you like a very small bag? Do you prefer a backpack? Um, do you like a messenger bag? Let me know in the comments, you personally, because I'm sure a lot of us are making a lot of bags for friends, family members, or, or to sell, which might be a variety of different types of bags. But you personally, what style of bag do you like to carry? Let me know in the comments. I'm looking forward to seeing what everyone's preference is. Thank you so much for tuning into Social Sunday. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye, everybody.